Hmm, when Terran's Ultrax Millennium have such large arsenals, but I never figured to organize one of my own. Let's see here. Boring, 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 boring. Kind of over-specialized, but I might be able to work with this. Ooh, what's this? A Sword of Harmony? Oh man, I gotta try this out. It won't let me wield it for some reason. Huh. Guess I'll save it for later. Like any JRPG gamer would, as a key item. Who knows when it'll come in handy. Hello and welcome to Matthew's Random Reviews. Or in this case, Retrospectives. Now, I know it might seem a bit odd for me to do this video as opposed to after part 2, but we need to start year 3 properly already. I mean, story writer has always been the type who likes to rush production, as you can probably tell by the crappy voice work. Hey now, I'm not a professional voice actor, nor do I wish to pretend to be one. You can at least try doing more takes more often. I'm lazy, so sue me! Anyway, you might have noticed I said year 3 and not season 5. This is mostly because of the rate of how production has had it low down lately. We haven't exactly been doing enough episodes to fill entire seasons. We might switch up the visuals of the intro, maybe change the song as the year progresses as well, but we'll see. This video is basically for anyone who doesn't want to watch the review mentary type videos. But I will not be reading the episodes individually, and I won't be doing much analysis either, because I don't want to go through all of them again to save time. So this is mostly off the top of my head. Additionally, this video will not contain accompanying footage unless I can find the individual clips. Maybe some screenshots, though. And title cards. Gotta have those. Anyway, without further ado, this is our summarized thoughts on... The first season of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Cue the new intro! I've already summarized the pilot before the intro in the previous episode, but what did I think of it? Well, it was a good start for the series, but there's not much that's going to draw the people who are kind of on the fence about this show in. The, in fact, most of the accounts of people becoming bronies involve watching multiple episodes, but some people have that one episode, and it's never these. The Ticketmaster wasn't really that Gray, it started a really long trend of writers making characters mean-spirited when the writers just didn't know how to handle morals. Ironically, this episode is actually written by two of the best writers for the show, so that's actually kind of sad. Though, Amy Keaton Rogers fell into this trend far more often than Faust did. Well, that's not saying much as Faust only actually directly wrote for three episodes, two of which were the pilot. I suppose that the whole mean-spirited thing is more forgivable in this season because the characters who haven't really had the chance to develop yet and the writers don't really know what they're doing, but there are just a few cases where it just doesn't work at all. Apple 
Roblox season is a forgettable episode and probably the major contributor to the fandom joke of Applejack being a background pony. Griffin the Brush Off is probably one of Cindy Morrow's better episodes. Ghostbusters, on the other hand, well, you remember what I said about making characters mean-spirited when the writers didn't know how to handle morals? Well, this is some of that at its worst. Trixie was just doing her job. Being arrogant is part of showmanship. Chris Savno only wrote two episodes for the show, and honestly, I'm thankful. His second one wasn't really all that well written either, but it was better than this one, at the very least. Dragon Shy was some good character development for Fluttershy, but it was basically Totsy's side for a long time. Some nice action in this episode, though. Look Before You Sleep is first evidence in the show that Charlotte Fullerton cannot write slice of life episodes. Bridal Gossip is one of those episodes where the main characters, aside from Twilight at first and Apple Bloom in this case, which also started an old trend of older ponies not listening to the Queen of Crusaders and causing them to be the ones who've reached a conclusion for the plot whenever it calls for it. Act mean spirited for the case of a moral. It's not quite racism as much as it is general xenophobia, but the fact that Zakur is a zebra and has a Caribbean accent probably doesn't help matters. Swarm of the Sentry is basically a gremlin's copy-paste uh, and introduces a long trend of Twilight using morally dubious magic. It's also because it's written by the master of continuity M.A. Larson that Zakora appears already. Don't get used to this, by the way. Winter wrap-up, winter wrap-up. This is a good development episode for Twilight. And once you hear that song, you will never forget it. Ever. Even if you get Alzheimer's or amnesia. Coincidentally, it's basically the let it go of My Little Pony. And it probably started the trend of remixes in the fandom. Hell, apparently even some Chuck E. Cheese's locations use it as intermission music. Three months of winter coolness and awesome holidays. If you ask me, this is the episode who people who haven't watched the show should probably start with. Call of the Cutie is the first piece of evidence that Megan McCarthy does not know how to write villains or antagonists. It introduces the Cutie Mark Crusaders, even though they already met in the first episode. I'm not sure how we were unaware that Rarity had a sister this whole time. Oh, and speaking of songs that are hard to forget... Yeah, get used to that. Coincidentally, I think I saw a remix of that playing out of Freddy Fazbear's once. <laughs> Follow other friends. Um, yeah, I've got nothing. I don't remember anything about this episode other than it was decent, I guess. Suited for success was showed a character trait of Fluttershy that I don't think it's utilized nearly enough and would only get vaguely hinted at in a later episode, I mean outside of that one IDW comic where she showed it off and that's all it there was in the IDW comics even. The arm size tight, the midi collar doesn't go with the shawl lapel, the hems are clearly machine stitched, the pleats are uneven, the fabric looks like toile, used a back stitch here when it clearly called for a top stitch or maybe a traditional blanket stitch, and the overdesign is reminiscent of pret a porter and not true French haute couture. But, uh, you know, um, whatever you want to do is fine. Sounds amazing. There's nothing left for me to do but check it out the really the only one who would appreciate it so much. Oh, and we also get another catchy as hell song that gets remixed to death. Piece 
which is actually a parody of another song from a musical, apparently. That is the state of the art, my dear. That is the state of the art. Bit by bit, putting it together. Family is all you have. Piece by piece, only way to make a work of art. Every moment makes a contribution. Every little detail plays a part. Having divisions, no solution. Everything depends on execution. Putting it together. Thread by thread, stitching it together. Though it's not the only one that's in the show, trust me, there is one that a lot of people know about that came a lot later. Time for the lightning round. Feeling Piggy King, it's about religion and irreligion, that's basically all there is to say. Sonic Green Boom was the episode that's the reason why Rainbow Dash used to be my favorite of the main six before I realized what a jerk watch she tends to be. Rarity still beats her to the bottom of the list though. Stairmaster, the other Chris Savno episode. The Showstoppers, Keymark Crusader development. There's a song. There's a better version of it. I want to hear it. A Dog and Pony Show. Dehumanizing Rarity by recognizing her prima donna attributes. Classy. Green is ear color. One of those episodes that added forced conflict. Over a barrel. Another forced conflict already. Bird in the hoof. God damn it, Charlotte Flirtin. Kingmark Chronicles. Emily Larson made a continuity error. All's well that ends well. God damn it, Cindy Morrow. Party of One. God damn it, Megan McCarthy. Best night ever. Worst season finale ever for this show. <sighs> It's really unfair to compare this season to the later ones because they were just getting started, but they really did keep repeating a lot of the same mistakes. It just became less frequent. I don't think a lot of bronies are really to admit this, thinking that before season 3 the show was unfailable, but the show has had its fair share of flaws across every season. Well, time to roll out the new rating system to make it easier for me to rate things. It goes as follows. 1. Horrible. 2. Bad. 3. Meh. 4. Good. 5. Amazing. You might notice that there's no 0, that's because the dividing by 0 is generally unsafe, and that ratings of 0 and 6 out of 5 should only be used in extremely rare cases, so just giving where the dead go to die a 0 out of 10. Well, it's not like I plan to review that one anyway. Anyway, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Season 1 gets a uh, 3 out of 5. Till next time, stay up tuned. Go now. Your time has not come yet. This is longer than anticipated. We need to find a filler villain. How did you get in here? Settle down, Mikasa. This one is exactly what we need. You will accompany her, make sure she can manage on her own. But she did not accord. There's no way I'll be able to keep up with her. I can assure you that won't be a problem. Please, don't make me do that. The night will last forever! I do it instead. I like her style. I have 
is a dead man. Oh, you're lost then. 